Hello everyone and welcome back to the third and final match in this semi-final best of three for the Russian Dota 2 League between Team Empire and Team Liquid. Liquid managed to take the first one out from Empire, but in that second game we saw Empire with the Siege, the constant pushing coming out, kind of enabled to them by the Keeper Light as well as uh, the Treant Protector actually who have uh, rushed the mech and was able to just keep his team healthy and in that fight Five constantly they were able to take it with a constant sort of a just slow no, steady constant time. pressure to towers didn't lose a single Dying tower on their lane pick. or on any lane uh, in that game Radiant we're able to take a game pick. two and now we're in th game three first ban phase already completed and picking going well underway here, we've got Niche's Prophet as well as Lone Druid going to be the bans from Empire on that dire side. With the second pick this game, and Liquid, with the first pick choosing to ban out both the Wisp and the Keeper Light that we saw really uh, kind of enable the way they played the last game. Keeper Light showing his stuff once again with that recall ability. Buybacks were uh, definitely a plenty in that most recent game. Time. And now we're looking for the picks going on here. We see Batrider didn't make it through the pool. And as a result, is going to be first picked by Team Liquid. And also, Nyx Assassin making it in the pool, so he's making the second pick. As well as the Darkseer for Empire in this particular game. Liquid also choosing to pick up the Magnus now with their second pick and awaiting the third one. But I uh, already have some pretty powerful heroes in team fights in the form of the Batrider and the Magnus. Batrider, of course, with his ability to just pull a hero out of fights, often get them so far out of position that they can't possibly survive and their team can't get in position to save them in a relevant way or in a way that doesn't just end up getting them killed as well. And they're going to combo it off with the Life Stealer for this game. So we're going to get the Nyx once again, probably to be played by the TC, or by TC. We see Batrider and Magnus, who are almost certainly going to be running solos. And uh, Batrider probably going to be in the hands of Bulba, Magnus. Going to Korok, which leaves TC to be picking up that Life Stealer. Running him as a farmer in the tri lane, and we'll see what two supports they want to pick up, because that's all they Ten have left to finish off this draft. And Empire with the Dark Seer, Nyx Five Assassin looking for a third pickup now. They have tons of options they can go for. We'll see if they want to run Nyx in the mid lane in the hands of Vigos, so and they end up running it as a support. Probably going to Silent. I would uh, kind of expect to see support Nyx coming out here, but they don't have to pick up another solo right now if they don't want to reveal how they're going to run him necessarily. You can also just choose to pick up a carry of their own. We saw in the past though that Liquid weren't really banning out opposing carries when they had the option. They were happy to let Empire run whatever they wanted since they don't really run that aggressive Radiant of carries for the most part. They go for more mid-gamey strats. And we're going to see Empire doing it once again with this puck, here, puck pickup. Which does pretty much secure Nyx Assassin as a support in a tri lane. As we'll probably see Puck in that mid lane in the hands Vigos and Darkseer, of course. Once again, go into Scandal. That's going to be the hero he's played all three of these games if he ends up with this one. Kind of must be getting boring for the guy, but he's a hero he's very familiar with. We've seen him play it from time to time for Team Empire. As it is a hero, they do tend to favor, and of course. Since the departure of Funic, Scandal has taken up that offlane role, so that's where he, one of the heroes that he plays a ton. Gonna hit the second ban phase now, though. Empire looking for two more heroes to round out their tri lane. Both a support as well as some sort of farmer here. We'll see what farmer in particular they choose to pick up. Radiant team uh, last game it was the Tree and Protector wasn't a hero I would have expected to see as their last pick. They could go for it again with this lineup. It's uh, not going to be probably quite as good puck. Not really as great as Queen of Pain 
in the late game for what the team was really were doing. Queen of Pain doing almost all of the damage for that team, and of course Sonic Wave does a lot more damage than really anything Puck can muster, but Puck does do a lot of magic damage in his own right, and also has that Dream Core ability that's really great for corralling people in, and if you can combine that on top of an overgrowth, it could be a lot of damage and uh, really just keep them stuck in place for quite some time. But we're going to see these bands coming out now. We've got the Leshrac as well as the Bane coming out for his bands from Team Liquid. Leshrac, a hero that they've run in the last two matches and uh, t had some success with both of them. It does really Ten enable their pushing that they were really trying to bring as an issue in these particular games. And uh, we're going to see Undying as well as Clockwork coming out as the bands from Empire right now. Clockwork, not a hero I would have expected to see, since you do kind of expect Liquid to be running for supports. But Clockwork, a very good turtling hero. And they certainly could have just run Batrider in the jungle, sent Clockwork to the offlane, make this mid, and just ran a dual lane for Life Stealer. They've done it in the past. I uh, think that was normally with a Nietzsche's Prophet as a jungler, but Batrider can do much the same thing early on, and they can just start roaming. Once he gets some levels, hits level 6, grabs a Blink Dagger. Has that flaming lasso, Five but uh, Liquid remaining. now looking for their final ban here. We'll see if they continue on the supports route, Reserve or if they're going to try and ban out some sort of farmer. It's certainly possible Empire could switch up the styles. They are a rather versatile team. They could go for a late game build with these heroes, picking up some sort of particularly hard carry. I mean, the Animage, obviously, the one that comes to mind. They're just going to choose to ban out the Shadow Dire Demons. So not the, none of those supports the ones they particularly wanted. We'll see what they end up going for. If uh, Empire leave Rubik in here, I kind of expect that to be the ban, the route they go. But uh, Empire going to think about it, what they want out here for the final ban. There's the Rubik ban. I think that is absolutely the right pick here. Uh, I think it would have been like insta-pick for Liquid if they had left in the pool. Of course, uh, Liquid do favor some of the more unusual lion. sports. They pick up Lion, and uh, in fact, there is Lion. <laughs> There's Gyrocopter coming out from Empire. It's going to suggest that is one of the heroes they might run here. Did last game, and then they ended up picking Tree and Protector, and it looks stupid. I was like, oh yeah, Tree and Protector, of course. Should have been able to predict that. Uh, but we will get out Gyrocopter, and probably going to be in the hands of Blower Brain, as he is the one who typically runs Gyrocopter for Empire. And a Liquid looking for their final pickup here. I've seen them Ten run Visage in that last remaining. game. It worked out pretty well for them early on. Maybe not as well as Lion Five did end up working out, and remaining. I think Fluff and stuff played those heroes in each of the respective games. The Lion in the first one, time. and the Visage in the second. Jakiro. They're gonna go with Jakiro. Okay. Jakiro of Sport, we don't kind of seeing more of after I always like to say oh we don't see that much of him anymore but he's starting to make it back in I think as a lot of supports are getting banned out the banning phases have sort of come to revolve around supports almost with the first ban phase always being stuff like Wisp like the Keeper of Light and then a lot of core heroes getting picked up early on which leads to ten seconds remaining supports being the ideal bans in the second hand we'll see Five what they want to go for with remaining. their uh last pick up here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Alina, to be honest. I think it would work out pretty well with Nixon, and they have a lot of burst that way. And uh, being able to take down some of these squishier heroes, like the Lion, like the Chikiro, even to some extent Batrider and Magnus, not known for being particularly tanky, can be a huge boon as we go on into the game. And of course, uh, shows off the differences between Lion and Alina. We'll see who wins. Determine who's the best once for all with the Dagon ults. <laughs> But they're going to spend a little more time. They have the 30 seconds left to think about it. Figure out exactly how they want to run these lanes. They see the entire liquid lineup. They can react to it. They can think about it. What they're going to run into. They're going to have that Lion Jakiro, Life Stealer, Tri Lane. Ten seconds kind of expect to see disruptor. it safe lane. And they're going to go with Disruptor, actually. Now, Disruptor, a sport we definitely don't see a lot of. I can, I can say that and feel very comfortable with it. Disruptor, a hero that kind of got picked up as a counter to a Wisp every once in a while. 
by Empire when other teams would grab the Wisp, and a couple times by other teams when Empire would grab the Wisp. Feels like it's always Empire games that end up with a Disruptor. He's somewhat difficult to play. Support, you have to kind of be conscious of timing with a Glimpse to be really effective with it. Of course, the Static Storm ability. Really powerful in a team fight if you can get them stuck in it. We'll see how it ends up working with Empire, but it definitely wouldn't have been one of my guesses. But it is a support that I do enjoy, both to play and to watch. So let's go over the players and their heroes, because it's time to get to this third and deciding game. For the series, we got Vios on the puck, expecting to see him head towards that middle lane. Disruptor going to be played by Silent. Goblock going to be on the Nyx Assassin. Scandal taking up the Dark Seer. Blow your brain on the Gyrocopter. It looks like Scandal not even pretending that he's going to head to that offlane. He's just going straight to the jungle for a Dark Seer this game. But they will be running a defensive tri lane to appear. With Puck heading to the mid lane. Meantime, on Liquid, the Radiant side. Got IX Mike 88 taking up the Jakiro. Fluff and stuff, gonna be on the line. TC picking up the Nakes. Korok on the Magnus, and finally, Bulba gonna be playing that Batrider. Appears that he is going to be just heading straight to the jungle as well. Already used skilled Firefly and used it to kill off all the trees between the hard camp and the easy camp on the rain jungle. Now just heading back to get his mana. I hate looking at Batrider's portrait while the game is paused. His face is so weird. He keeps like he moves his mouth in the weirdest way. It's hypnotizing. Okie dokie, gonna get back to it. It looks like whatever the issue with was was with Skype, gonna be resolved. And we'll get back to this game. So gonna be uncontested farm. In this game for the carries. It's more the resembling the uh, first game in terms of laying no aggressive tri -laning. Coming out from Empire this time. Could have just let uh, the Nakes farm. Inside of Liquid, we did see that. However, in the first game, going the way of Empire, it didn't really work for them. He got big. They were able to take a look. A couple racks, but they got stalled out. We'll see if uh, Empire is able to do some more of the same. Come out ahead even with the life still getting basically free far. And the, his uh, respective safely. Mid lane going to be Vigas versus Korok. Denied. Puck versus Magnus, not a matchup we've seen thus far in the series. Magnus not getting picked up. I don't even think he was banned out. I think he was just never picked up. Well, see if he's able to get the best of the last hits in this mid lane. Also, sort it. There we go. Nope. There we go. Haha. <laughs> Kind of expect both carries to be basically going even in terms of last hits. They're both just going to be sitting in there, safe lane farming. Blue Brain's under the tower already because the pull came out. Well, it looks like Liquid waited a little bit longer to pull. Just because of the method they're doing. There was a stack that came out first. From Liquid on this uh, medium camp. So the only place really any action's going down in terms of contesting each other's farm is this mid lane. And you kind of expect that Vigos is getting the best of it at the moment. Goblock rotating in towards Korok. Only has the mana burn. <laughs> Looks like he's just going to throw it just here to be a nuisance. Burn some mana off of Korok. Slow down his farm. Get regen picked up. Bulb is stacking in the jungle, getting that experience on. Inside. On this Batrider, shouldn't be too long before he does get some 
levels going on. Already got a couple stacks here. Quark pretty low in HP actually already in this bin lane as well as low on mana. Seeing 45 gold away from that bottle, which is pretty much exactly where he does not want to be. He doesn't have the mana to shockwave. He can't really get in range of last hit because he's completely zoning him out now. And he's going to have shockwave mana in you know 10 seconds. Nine, 11 seconds. Which is kind of a long time. It's leaving him basically to the point where he's going to be able to Oh, he levels up, gets it closer. But just his passive income will be able to give him that bottle eventually. Anytime he's missing on a bunch of last hits, seeing at half of what Puck has at this point. And Korok in some trouble. Vigos chasing him down. Ix Mike is here to support, however. Probably not going to be able to land too much of anything. And Korok going to get chased back, and has his bottle finally coming. Probably going to immediately. Puck, hoo-hoo. Going for the kill, Korok low in HP, and he's gonna be able to get out alive. Attack. Seeing it like 20 HP, no big deal, no fear. Definitely wasn't afraid for his life. But Vigos showing off that aggressive play that he's sort of been famous for. Another loser here, gonna fly through, not gonna land at Korok this time. Here goes Battle Crow. So mid lane gonna s continue to be the only place really having any action going on. The supports look like they're mostly content to just stack and pull. Actually a lot of stacking going on in this large camp, probably to help accelerate the farm. A blow your brain on this gyrocopter. Kind of farm in a way that Nyx doesn't really have access to. So you can't kill creep stacks very easily. Haste gonna be picked up by Golbuck and with that he's gonna be able to spot out these supports here from attack. Team Liquid. Nobody really willing to uh, commit too much to that fight, just kind of hitting each other a couple times. Vigos dodging some shockwaves. Gets his bottle back and use it to get it back up to full. Looks like both of them are going to be bottle crawling at the same time there. Radiance top tower is under attack. So, mostly just a harass and bottle crow going on in this mid lane, but still coming out ahead in favor of Vigos. He's up by 10 last hits. Fluff and stuff has made his way up towards his top lane now to try and slow the push coming out from Blow Your Brain on his tower. We'll see how long he can survive doing this. There are supports here. In the form of Go Black as well as Silent. Mana Burn gonna come off and Fluff and stuff. He doesn't have enough mana to use any abilities now. Gonna have to probably pop a Clarity and there it goes. That's the only way he's gonna be able to continue in this lane trying to get anything done. In the meantime, 2C putting some pressure on the tier 1 in the bottom lane as well. And no one has rotated down there yet. How's Scan doing in terms of levels? F level 5 up. Call down being used as well as the uh, kinetic field. So Blur Brain gonna be farming these ancient, or uh, not even ancients, just large camp. Radiance bottom tower is under gonna do as much damage as you can. Throwing off a rocket barrage even here now. Okay, another set of flat can coming out. I'm gonna give him the rest of these it looks like. Pretty low in HP. Fortunately, the lion being kept back by Goblock. Yeah, that's going to give him quite a bit of gold. We're not even close to being even now. With the Nakes. See if a Midas picked up? Yep, there is a Midas. Which explains where the lead is coming from. That fi fast Midas, always a big deal. Midas is up on Blow Your Brain as well. So not hitting, last hitting quite as well as TC thus far, but has a couple more farming aids that uh, TC doesn't really have access to. Infest, of course, can just kill one creep, but flat cannon a pretty good ability for killing off lots of creeps all at once. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. We'll see if uh, any stacking comes on these ancients from these supports on the side of Team Empire. In the meantime, it looks like Scandal has made his way to the bottom lane trying to set something up to uh, a defense of some sort on this tier 1 tower. Gonna be able to Radiant keep him off. In the meantime, the Radiant Courier gets killed while... Oh, the disruption comes off on Korok. He's in some trouble. Silent taking some damage, though. 
Gonna lay off a couple auto attacks. Double damage on Vigos. So it needs to be moderately careful. The courier. Gonna scout him out. And here comes the orb. First blood. First blood in the meantime does get My on pride. silent. Lion You're able to get the last hit. Korok continuing to be chased. And he shouldn't really be able to get away from this. Gets the skewer, lands on Goblock, the orb gonna come through. Greetings. And there's the last auto attack. Earth Spike's not gonna be able enough to save him or the ice path. Croc does go down, but first foot does go the way of Liquid. I'm not sure where's, what happened to Silent. I was trying to follow the chase. He ran into here, I believe, and looks like the supports just uh, knew he was there and ran in to get him. Led to the kill. Top tower on that disruptor. Meantime, tier 1 tower did go down the top lane, blow your brain. Didn't get the last hit, but was there for it. The only attack. one up there for it. Still got that golden experience going on for him. And my cat's in my room. TC wandering Dyer's around. Darkseer gets the deny on the tier 1 tower in the bottom lane. Kind of a big deal. We saw a lot of denies come out the first game in favor of Team Liquid, I believe. Well, that was the second game. Got several big denies for Team Liquid. But uh, when you're the only ones losing towers, it probably doesn't matter too much. And Vigas continue to farm the mid lane up to 1,550 gold. 600 away from that blink dagger if that's the route he wants to go. And uh, with the fact that he hasn't even decided to finish boots, it does look like he's trying to rush that quick blink dagger. Looks like the uh, stupid chicken courier doesn't really have a death animation. Just lying there. Whatever. Letting them know. A constant reminder to Korok for, of his failure. To keep his friend alive. Cluckles. Looks like a smoking trying to come out here from Bulba. As well as Fluff and stuff. Unfortunate part for them, they're gonna run directly into this sentry ward. And Dyer's bottom tower it looks like they don't attack. have sight up there to really pair up with it. Bulba coming in. Run pretty fast. Radiant's gonna get dis or uh, glimpsed back. It looks like Goblock is gonna go in. Dreamcrawl does drop on four here. Heroes. Doing a lot of damage. Blow your brain gonna get pulled by the flaming lasso now. And it looks like it's gonna be his death as well. So two kills and they're going the way of Team Liquid and there's a the little revenge coming out. Earth Spike on silent looks like he'll be going down as well. Shockwave gonna land him. Scandal. Low on HP, but we'll be able to get out. If you got still alive, able to kill off Lion and then orbs into the middle of them. So triple kill going for Korok there, and it's a four for one trade in favor of Team Liquid. Not the kind of trades Empire wants to be taken, especially with their carry dying in the mid lane. Far from home, he's picked up Phase Boots to go with the Hand of Midas, and he's dead with Hand of Midas off cooldown. Ooh, painful, painful deaths. In the meantime, Farman coming out from this life stealer. He's got a magic wand on the way. As well as a clarity. Just wants his mana, man. Just wants that mana. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And it looks like some stacks gonna start coming out here from the supports on the ancients. Just wondering how long it was gonna be for them to start trying that. Get that gold just sitting there waiting for Gyrocopter to take it. Gonna fire a call down here. Hits on the creep wave. Hits him quite a bit from Korok getting harassed a little bit as well. Meantime, Fat Rider getting a pick off on Nyx in that mid lane. Flaming Lasso not even used for that. Uh, looks like. F no, Finger Death wasn't used for that either. That was in the last fight. Missed kill, don't know exactly how Goblock let himself die. He's at level 5, and actually at level 6 now, so we'll have that vendetta. With that, he could try and set up some sort of gank, and try and get his team back into this puck. We'll get his blink dagger up now. Vendetta gonna be used, unfortunately, it was used uh, directly in range of this Observer Ward. Coming from Korok, actually. So. Goblock not gonna find anyone here with this vendetta. Wandering around, maybe run to fluff and stuff. 
Even though it's already off cooldown. Fluff almost going for that Earth Spike core. Gonna find a DD rune. Earth Spike gonna land. Not before Goldback is able to get the spike care of himself. Playing Lasso coming out. On Disruptor, there's the reverse polarity as well. Those two heroes both gonna go down. Support's picked off. Shakiro getting one kill, Barret getting the other. In the meantime now. Everyone running away, and it looks like the courier probably going down is going down here. Bulba able to get it. it. Looks like he might be sacrificing his life for it. Well, maybe not. In the meantime, Korok able to kill off Scandal, and now Vigos running away, blinking out. Looks to be fine for the moment, but Bulba, given pursuit, he's got a blink down here of his own. Unfortunately, he does not have an orb. Fucking get hit by that earth spike and they'll skewer back and the illusory are not going to still be there by the time the disables are done. Jumps the gun a little bit on that phase shift, lets him get earth spiked, then skewered and killed. Seven more kills going the way of Team Liquid. It's ten to two now. Kill score in favor of them. They're looking kind of far behind. In terms of kills at the very least. Let's take a quick look. Experience of gold on these charts. See exactly what's going on. Gold not too far in favor, only about 3k. In favor of Team Liquid. Experience though. That's where the real story's at with all these kills. Just sitting above 5k. More like 6k. 13 minutes in. Not the biggest lead of all time, but certainly a large lead. We're we gonna drop the call down just to farm up once again. Gonna get slowed up here by TC. Mana burn gonna come off from him. At TC already taking a lot of damage. There's the lasso. It looks like blow your brain. Finger of death. He's dead again. Pale comes out, lands on a couple heroes, but not gonna be enough. And Vigos gets picked off as well. 12 to 2 now. Gonna be the kill score. And that's losing their two basically most important heroes, both the putt and the gyrocopter for Empire. It's this asshole, guy with the eye. It's really setting up a lot of these kills. Landing earth spikes on always a couple heroes. Finger of death there was important for just making sure that gyrocopter died before anything happened. And any shenanigans went on. And this disruptor pick, I really feel like it's not doing a ton. Dyer's He's sitting in the bottom lane trying to farm, I guess. Get Dyer's something going on. He's level 6 now. Attack. Tier 1 tower just going to go down. Lion grabs that last hit and with the gold, he is sitting quite rich for a support. Has a blink dagger in f at 15 minutes. It's going big, going aggressive on this lion. It's arcane boots and blink dagger. 15 minutes in, only 15 last hits, but how's he doing in kills? Sing at 316 and got a last hit on that tower. Whew. That far, man. That far. And everyone hanging out, courier gonna respawn on the dire side. A lot of courier death this game. Both sides going down, courier gonna be probably full of items. If I can just click on it, there we go. No, nope, just getting a buckler for scandal, as well as Goblock getting a smoke of deceit. Looks like he's playing on deceiving someone. In the near future. Hopefully the entire enemy team smoke the seed up on Puck as well. And it looks like they're gonna use the first one here. Catching on four heroes. Silent the only one not gonna be smoked up Korok. Looking to be going for something, gonna get caught by an impale here, and there's the Bat Rider ultimate coming off a of go black. The call not gonna be used, but it's not doing a ton, and there's already two heroes down. Other side of Empire TC. Taking some damage. There's from the Chikiro it's in the middle though. Keep an Empire's lineup back. He's gonna just prop his Midas. Lick his wounds and back off for the time being. But that's another two free kills going the way of Empire. They try and set up a gank. They end up just getting killed themselves. Now Fluff and stuff. Sitting outside the fight. Has that blink there. Or spike finger! Silent's dead. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that, but th that was Silent right there, and now he's dead. Because <laughs> he's thought to tame the lion. 
They're probably just going to call it. They know they're way out of this at this point. 15 to 2. Their lanes just didn't work out the way they wanted them to. And uh, the fights just really didn't go their way. Maybe their lanes were working out. It was just good rotation coming out from Liquid. Thinking about it now, their lanes were fine. If you look at the charts, like Golden Experience worked. Experience was basically dead even until the fight started breaking out. <laughs> Cold was actually going in their favor. They were out farming him. The problem is... These rotations coming out from Liquid, they were just able to get a lot more done in these fights. Fluff stuff, farming in the jungle. That's what I typically do when the enemy team leaves. But, Empire gonna give it up and... In a very, very short game by comparison to the other two. Radiant Liquid Radiant. are going to be able to take it. Right, so Liquid take this best of three in what is probably seen as kind of a disappointing final game for the series. But uh, Empire gonna drop down now to the loser's bracket, and that's where they will face off, I believe, tomorrow. And uh, I think that's gonna be it for games for the day. I'll be right back while we make sure. Thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, be right back. <laughs>